Hey guys, I am DC, your host of Barside Job Live. Today is Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. We're so happy that you chose to hang out here with us for my Tuesday night show at the very cool Vocal Studios in North Dallas. This show happens at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time every freaking Tuesday and features some of the very best tribute and cover bands in America. By the way, you can now download my shows on Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Twitch, Spreaker, Google Play, TuneIn, and Deezer, or just anywhere you find cool content. In fact, if you can hear me now as a podcast, you can actually see us if you want to go to VocalNow.com. And remember, Vocal is intentionally misspelled with a... K. That's right, Brad. You're trying to sound like Bree, aren't you? I was. Yeah, I know. It didn't. It didn't work. I but didn't. anyway, thanks for the try. Hey, Appreciate the attempt. I've my legs and everything. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, just the rest of it's just not working. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get that out of my get that out of my head. Anyway, okay. And be sure when you get to VocalNow.com, you click on the bar side jive image at the top of the app or at the top of your browser. Actually, you don't have to do that anymore. All you got to do is look up top, and you'll see the show. It'll be live right now. 7.30 p.m. You can see it live. All of my content is on demand on my YouTube channel at Barside Jive Live. And remember, Barside Jive is also sponsored by The Zoo, the world's best rock and can be streamed 24-7, 365 at VocalNow.com. Damn, it's hot in here, Jake. Can we? <laughs> it is pretty warm. It is freaking <laughs> hot in here. Woo. It, it might be the... <laughs> the scotch. It, the scotch? The scotch? I don't think it's the scotch. Warming as I don't think... I don't think it's the scotch. Brad says it might be. I don't, are you hot? A little bit. A little, see, they're a little warm, and it's they haven't a had. a jacket. Yeah, but the, yeah, but it's it's hot. It's freaking hot. I mean, it's, it's damn hot. <laughs> All right, tonight, guys, I have a a great pleasure. I have Soul Sacrifice, a tribute tense to Santana in the studio. But first, we got rock news. Okay, my rock news segment is brought to you by, you guessed it, Oh, Grapevine Cigar and Tobacco Shop located in historic downtown Grapevine, Texas. Tonight, our featured cigar is, I think I got a photo. The one Jay took? <laughs> yeah, Jay. Jay does a great job on the phone. Look at there, Jay. Damn, what Jay. a great job. Great oh. job, Jay. Whoa. He needs to do our photos. He totally yeah. never ceases to amaze me. Wow. Good job, Jay. Composition is awesome. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the Liga Privada T52 Corona Viva Habano Corona Extra. God, that's a long ass name for a little old cigar, <laughs> isn't it? You think it's some... a little cigar. <laughs> no, it's so, I mean, it's it's normal length. It's, yeah. you know, it's, but, but, you know. Yeah, it is a long-ass name. I'm not going to say it again. Anyway, while it's hard to beat the 94-rated Liga Pravada, <laughs> I'm not going to say it again. Number nine, Drew Estate was up for the challenge by creating a successful follow-up, and this new gym is in a Liga of its own as T-5-2, a unique dark reddish-brown stock-cut sun-grown Habano wrapper that's glistening with oils, covers a blend of seven different tobacco varieties that is then aged for a full year after rolling to create a complexly flavored cigar. That's one. their words, not mine. Nice. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. T-52 is bold and packed with notes of leather, earth, spice, and black pepper. And as my friend Bob says, just tastes like a freaking cigar. <laughs> but anyway, receiving a well-deserved 92 rating Liga Privada T52 Corona. I'm not, I said I'm not going to say it again. Corona Viva is a successful predecessor that's just as limited as the number nine. So go see Kenny, Tom, or Dinah at Old Grapevine Cigar and Tobacco Shop for one of those cigars. Or for all your smoking needs. Now let's talk some rock and roll news because I have got some, and it's all about Judas Priest. Hey. Guys, Judas Priest, you a fan? Yeah, oh, I've yeah. seen them. Yeah. yeah. Seen These them guys are, I, I got a room full of fans, guys. Well, I'm included. I love Judas Priest. Well, they're plotting their 50th anniversary U.S. Hey. tour. 
That's right. Photo, please. Yes. There it is. Jay. Did he take this one too? He's amazing. Oh, my God. He That's is amazing. Wrong. Judas Priest announced a fall U.S. tour as part of their 50th anniversary run. The leg launches September 9th in Oxon Hill, Maryland, and concludes October 17th in Las Vegas. Isn't that what MD stands for, is Maryland? Yeah. Yes. Isn't that? Okay, yes. I just want to make sure or I'm correct dog. on that. Huh? <laughs> or Mad Dog. Mad Dog, yeah. Well, we're, we're not having any Mad Dog no, tonight, we, that's we, for we, sure. We stepped up a little bit. Yep, we did. Got classy. Yeah. So full ticket information is available at the band's website, JudasPriest.com. Judas Priest are primed and ready to deliver the goods with our 50 heavy metal years anniversary celebration stage show spectacular, the group said in a statement. Performing a blistering cross-section of songs from our lives in metal, we cannot wait to raise horns with you again at this once in a metal lifetime event. These guys are ready. Yeah. They are cocked and they are locked. The band's most recent studio album is 2018's Fire Power, which they promoted on tour both as headliners and as co-headliners with Deep Purple. Yeah. Seen That's that a good too. show. Yeah, amazing. Producer Andy Sneap filled in for guitarist Glenn Tipton, who was unable to perform live except for a few few cameos due to his battle with Parkinson's disease. Singer Rob Halford noted that Sneap was committed to Judas Priest through the album's touring cycle, the band's publicist says that Tipton will be appearing as his health allows. Hofford also recently hinted that the band might be thinking about recruiting former guitarist K.K. Downing for a guest spot on its 50th anniversary tour. Now, Downing quit angrily in 2011 over an ongoing, let's say, breakdown in communication between himself and Hofford, or other elements of the band, Hofford, and management, Hofford, for some time. That's a cool question, he replied. Yeah. When asked about the chances of reconnecting on stage, so like he's totally in if invited. It's like anything in rock and roll. I love the kind of chaos that surrounds the rock and roll. That's to me what it's all about. There should be no laws, no regulations, no restrictions. Anything can happen with priests, so just keep an eye out and watch out especially when we play live because it's all on the table. Mm. Wow. They put on a great show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah this is going to be huge. Yeah. So Judas Priest U.S. Tour 2020 will be in Dallas October 3rd at the Pavilion at Toyota Music Factory in Austin on October 5th at the HEB Center and in San Antonio, Texas on October 6th at the Freeman Coliseum. You can find their full tour schedule on my Facebook page at Barside Jive Live. And what would be news without talking about a little of boners? It's ZZ, ZZ Top. Top. <laughs> Why ZZ Top were far from an obvious documentary subject is what we're talking tonight. ZZ Top aren't the most natural fit for a rock documentary. Newly released on home video, that little old band from Texas bucks the genre's template in many ways. The group has thrived for more than five decades without breakups, lineup changes, or commercial bottoming outs that typically provide the narrative backbone for these sort of projects. Instead, the idiosyncratic... <laughs> That's a good time. Wow. Good they job. throw in those damn big words. <laughs> Challenges me. Self-contained trio has managed to maintain an air of mystery while avoiding any major controversies or tragedies throughout its entire career. Man, and that's huge. That is. That's huge. I mean, hell, it's hard for some time these cover tribute bands to stay together. But, <laughs> Very hard. Yeah, yeah. But, Very you know, hard. you got these national acts touring all the pressures all the time and and yeah, they these guys, those three guys. Of course, you know they are from Texas. Yeah, because we kind of breed them right here in Texas. So. Yeah, that's right. So, so why pull back the curtain now? Well, I mean, on the documentary. <laughs> yeah, like millions of kids who grew up in the '80s, 
Director Sam Dunn was introduced to the music of ZZ Top through their eye-catching videos on MTV. The ones that feature guitarist Billy Gibbons and his bassist, Dusty Hill's Very Long Beards, and all those attractive women. Very attractive women. Very. And very with, short skirts. And, yes. And high boots. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, tight tops. Yes. Yeah. No photos from Jay. Um, but <laughs> but they did have an iconic roadster. Yeah, they which did. Which was pretty cool. But he was unfamiliar with the group's earlier music, which I cannot believe because I cut my teeth on some ZZ. Yeah. That little old band from Texas makes its home video release on February 28th, which three days mm -hmm. via DVD, Blu-ray and digital formats. The documentary chronicles the 50 year career of the trio, starting with individual members, early forays into music before ZZ top to their slow, but gradual rise beyond their region during the seventies to their ascendancy. <laughs> there you go. Thank That's you. A good word. Thank you to mainstream popularity, starting with 1983's, Eliminator. In addition to interviews with all three founding members, Gibbons Hill and drummer Frank Beard, the movie offers testimonials from notable figures such as Billy Bob Thornton. I love Billy Bob yeah. Thornton. Steve Miller and Queens of Stone Age's Josh Holm. Yeah. And, and it just so happens. Right here on Barside Jive Live, I've got the trailer for that little old band from Texas. They're unique, they're eccentric. When you would see them on stage, it was like seeing a Bugs Bunny in person. <laughs> Is it better to have the beards over the covers or under the covers? All right, well, I can't wait. It will be. I know, it's coming up, coming up soon, Friday night. That's right, Friday night. Well, guys, that wraps my rock news for this Tuesday. If you like my rock news, then Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7.30 p.m. are the place to be. If you like rock and roll history, then turn on and tune into my daily dose of rock music history simply by checking out my Daily Dose playlist on YouTube, Barside Jive Live. And we've got some action from the Tipsy Freaking Gypsy. Awesome. Marky, whiskey, dust off the bottle, cause it's time to break. It's worth the price you pay. Line them up and let's take a shot. We got some drinking to do. Yeah, you know what'll hit the spot. Oh, you're my kind of fool. Sorry, guys. Breeze out on assignment. <laughs> cute. Very cute. <laughs> Where's she at? <laughs> or wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Bree. Everybody runs for alcohol. They're closing up and we yell, hell no. She will. That's all she needs. They'd be just as entertaining as us. <laughs> yeah. Sad to say. Look better too. Sad, sad to say but it's true. <laughs> yeah, her and Boner could do a whole show. They would never need anybody else. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So uh what we got next? Uh Brad, I think it's your turn, buddy. Hey, I think it is, buddy. You're up to bat? I am. Here we go. Our job live. Jay's got the photos ready. Jay, Jay does an amazing job, and he, I would really like Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? All right, guys. Welcome to Art Jive Live. <laughs> it's a long, it is long. It's longer than the second. <laughs> it, it almost is. 
Is uh, Brad's here? Brad uh, Jensen, artist extraordinaire, is here. And uh, what we got going on there, Brad, in the world of art? In the world of art, we got a lot of things going on, but that's not what we're here about. <laughs> no, tonight oh. we're going to discuss. I'm glad. Last last week I was out for some reason. I don't know why, but. Hey, did we, lo- did we lose Freddie? No, Freddie's right no. there. Oh, okay. So I'm like, sure. <laughs> oh, okay. There he, yeah. there he is. I got worried about him. I no. thought maybe he went home. <laughs> maybe he thought he was over. <laughs> Freddie's here. Yet. He's just waiting. That, that whole tripsy gypsy thing messed know, him he's up. Like, I'm yeah. out of here. Yeah, I guess it's over. <laughs> She's not here. I'm gone. Probably, probably looking up pictures of Bree. That's what he's doing. That's what he's probably. doing. He's probably, probably. He's on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. That's why she's got 10.1 followers and I've got eight. <laughs> she's got over 10,000. No. Yeah. Yeah, she does. She does. Yeah. Because Freddie's over going, <laughs> Yeah, already. I can find yeah. He just saw our picture. He's all, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we need to. We probably need to oh, it change cracks our, me get up. Our photos off Instagram and then Damn. We get more followers. Yeah, I don't know what the trick is, but I think you got to be better looking than us. I think that's what it is because <laughs> we're not. No, it ain't happening. No. But I, I will tell you one something that's happening is this freaking heat in this building. <laughs> I'm like sweating my are, balls off. Are, I ain't kidding you. you are wet. My my drawers are wet. Oh man. It's it's yeah, but there's no sense in having the heater up that. Hi. I mean, that's just that's a waste of electricity. Yeah, yeah. If your but. drawers are wet, that's TMI. <laughs> oh, yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you forgot. This is bar side job, yeah, though. Bar you, side. Can talk, yeah, you can talk TMI. about anything at a bar, Robert. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you can. <laughs> you know all about that. I know about the jive. Okay. okay. He's got the jive. There you go. Oh. But, uh, anyways, tonight we're talking about. Oh, yeah, art. Yeah, art. Yeah. And that's the actual, it's the uh, cover art. Yes. The album art. Is, yes. Uh, and tonight we're discussing. Uh, you got it pulled up. Uh, which one? Well, we, okay, we want. Uh, what's the album? It's Revolver Beatles. The, oh oh yeah, well, I've got that. Jay's Jay Jay. There we go. Classic. Um, that's it. Well, I what? Don't think you were in on that, but you're right there in the center. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's well, so the problem? Is, this must be like their <laughs> like their. Uh, that's me in the center. That, that is you in the center. Yeah. Um, I was the fifth beetle. <laughs> you were the fifth beetle. Okay. Yeah. I, came, I was reincarnated. I came back. But Sorry, I was guys. Like, I need another hit of acid for that one. <laughs> no. Okay. This was the it, you see me right there, there in the center. Yeah, okay. Right there. There yeah. you are. Yeah. This is, like I said, this was in the beginning of their psychedelic period. Yeah, yeah it was. But, um, we were all on mm-hmm. yeah, psychedelics. Okay. So in the good days. So in 66, I was... Uh, Three months old, and wow, you age well. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you look really good. It's the Neutrogena. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. And the scotch. And the scotch. Yeah. All right, scotch. It makes, helps. Yeah, it helps a lot. But anyways, this was released in the UK on August 5th, 1966, and three days later, it was released in the United States. All right. And, uh, I have this album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's a standard. It is. For everybody. Yeah. It is. It's, uh, depending on who you talk to, it's considered their best album Depends <clears throat> on who talk to. but um yeah like i said this was uh released and it was uh one of the albums with the, the beginning of the psychedelic period and it was designed by klaus 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 mm-hmm. klaus klaus vorman vorman no, i'll let you have that one r yes m-a-n-n german german yeah mm-hmm. um from hungberg hamburg friend of the beatles yeah, he was a very good friend. Hamburg. Oh my gosh, that's a, I got a news story. Hot off the press. <laughs> Hot off the press. Yes. Breaking news. Breaking yes. news. Breaking news. Wait, right here, right here, right here. I was handed this right before I came in. Breaking news. Yeah, breaking news. Okay. Justice Department condemns Trump for pardoning the Hamburglar. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. Washington, D.C., standing on the White House lawn with the black and white striped mascot next to him. President Donald Trump made it official. The Hamburglar. We just pardoned. got through talking about it. He's from Hamburg. Yeah. Humber has Hamburg. been pardoned of his crimes. Look. No kidding. Uh, it's long you. past time yeah. a great injustice was corrected. Trump told the gathered press, the only thing the Hamburglar is guilty of is loving hamburgers and occasionally taking them. I won't read the rest of the story, but see. <laughs> it's a hot. I mean, it's fresh. Hot not off the it's so fresh. I couldn't even do it during this segment yeah. because he eats a lot of hamburgers. He yes, he, he does. does. He so, does so every does day at lunch. And so does really the hamb- yeah. And so does the hamburger. 
Yeah. And eat a lot of burgers. From Hamburg. From Hamburg. Germany. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the Beatles, they were all friends. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. They invited him to the Abbey Road Studios and to pre- preview the record, and they asked if he'd like to do the album art. And he thought, wow, that'd be an amazing opportunity. So he did. And uh, he moved to London, and he worked in his tiny attic apartment for about three weeks. And then he, this style of artwork, it's not up there anymore. Oh, that style of artwork uh, was uh, called, it's a pen and ink. Jay, photo, please. uh, Pen and ink and collage. No, not that one. And he drew out the, the Beatles and... That's all his hand drawings. And wow. Then he, what he did is he took the photos from, remember the album, the uh, Butcher cover? Yeah. The controversy? Yeah, yeah. Um, he took the photos from that, the negatives and the black and whites, and he collaged them on the revolver around where the Beatles characters are. Some of them he drew in, the characters, and some of them were collaged from the, the photos from the Butcher cover, which is a great idea. I never knew that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Awesome. Cool. Mm-hmm. And um, so what else? Uh, so anyways, McCartney was very pleased. He said that we're all very pleased with uh, what he did. And here's a, a side note. He only got paid 50 pounds. And because uh, the record company said that's the limit that we pay for all our album artwork. <laughs> really? And 50, 50 pounds, pounds of what? And uh, 50 pounds yeah. of what? I love yeah. that. Yeah, 50 pounds of not 50 much. 50 pounds of, uh, yeah. But, um, it, and a uh, little side note that this album, this is back when the Grammys, I think, were cool. There was a category for best album art or best album cover, and he won the Grammy. Wow. Year for mm. best album cover. By artists who were paid less than 50 pounds. 50 pounds, yeah. <laughs> or 50 pounds or less. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, 50 pounds of herb. 50 pounds of yeah. herb. Something. But yeah, it's a great album. Uh, the uh, Kloss is still alive. He's about 85 or 86 years wow. old. Wow. And he still He's does. young. Yeah, you can look at some of his artwork online. You can look him up. He's an interesting character. He a, was a friend of the Beals um, back in their uh, younger days. Well, and, they played a lot in Hamburg yeah. in the early days. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Hamburg. Hamburg. Another side note is the European release. They had thirteen songs, and in the U.S. they only we only got eleven really songs on the album. Hmm. So, so hmm. the two that they removed, they added to their next album. Wow. Yeah. So, so hmm. that's cool. But yeah, you're supposed to ask me. Do I have the? Cause what two did they did they remove that um, later put on the next that is album? An excellent question. That one I couldn't find the information on. Um, I'd have to go and do side by side, but um, right. I have the set list. I mean the the songs. If you're interested, because you busted me that one time. So from here now on, I have all the songs. What songs are on that album? Well, this one there's uh, Tax Man, <laughs> Eleanor Rigby. Rigby. That's a great Tax Man's a great song. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm only sleeping. Love you too. Here, there, and everywhere. Yellow. Oh, Submarine. another great. She said. She said. Good day, sunshine. Good song. day, son. Yeah. Um, and uh, your birds can sing for no one. Dr. Robert, I want to tell you, got to get you into my life. Great got song. To get you in. Yeah. yeah. Those are and all great tomorrow songs. Tomorrow Never Knows. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're all great songs. But uh, yeah, this was also voted the best album of all the Beatles album covers. This is voted the best one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I love the White album, but the album's pretty plain. <laughs> The cover. Mm-hmm, it is. Just kind of plain white. It's just plain white, and I think it just says Beatles on it. Yeah. Pretty much. But I like the album. Yeah. and um, But uh, one of the ideas that uh, Klaus wanted to express was in a sea of color, he wanted to stand out with black and white. Because a lot of the, the cream, the cream, cream, um, and during the, a lot of the albums during that time period, the psychedelic period, they were throwing out a lot of colors and stuff. Well, Klaus did just the opposite. Psychedelic colors. And did just the opposite with black and white. Right. Which is a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. That's all I got. Brad, that was great. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah, I love the Even Martin, Robert yeah. learned something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know about Pete. He got gypped on two songs. <laughs> I think, just I Pete, I think Pete was just shaking his head to act like he was interested. But Robert, I could <laughs> tell, was, was more, he Robert was really getting into it. He's more interested in And, in and Freddie, he went and took a whiz <laughs> while we were in this segment, so he <laughs> doesn't care at all. He, was, he, was, he, he perked up when I said pounds, and he was like, pounds are what? Yeah. That's my keyboard. Yeah. what are we talking about? 
Yeah, he fits right into soul know. sacrifice. Yes, he does. does. <laughs> got a permanent chair. No, that's it. <laughs> that's good, Brad. Thank you so much. You're very good. I appreciate it. And I especially love this photo. That that there is probably a limited run. Like the butcher. <laughs> Remember the butcher album? We mm-hmm. should put that on a T. With all the dead mm-hmm. yeah, the, cool. babies. Yes. Uh-huh. Could, actual babies, but could dolls. We, can we legally put that on a T? We can illegally do a lot of things. <laughs> yes, you can. We can do it until they send us a letter oh, saying Oh, man, anymore. right. That's true. All it takes is a letter. And hey, if we give them away. Uh, I don't want to know. We can't give them away. No, for a special donation. Oh, for a donation you to the contribution. There you yeah, go. yeah. Artists figure out a way to get money. Yeah, yeah. right. Sometimes. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, it is time for some music. This is time for my live music showcase. That is right. Yay! My own My live music showcase is sponsored by Hip and Hippie. Hip and Hippie is a planet-loving company known for its high-quality, earth-friendly, 100% recyclable candle line and natural body care products. It's no wonder eco-supporting people love Hip and Hippie. Hippandhippie.com. Well, guys, my guest today is Soul Sacrifice. That's right. The guys guys are here. Tribute to Santana. Santana. And these guys are an authentic tribute to the iconic music of Carlos Santana. The guys are based in Dallas, and they bring a fresh and exciting approach to the music that will undoubtedly put a spell on you the way only the music of Santana can. As lead guitarist Robert Teagarden says, come hear the band and let the music move you. Yes, I do. So let's welcome Soul Sacrifice to Barside Jive Live. Hey guys, hey, hey. what is going on? What is going on? To be here. Yeah. Freddie, you. you're back. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I'm here. Short short trip. <laughs> yeah, short trip. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here, and thank you went, for having us. Oh yeah. no, thank it's you. my thank pleasure, you. guys. It's my pleasure. I I've heard some of your stuff and. Uh, Heard some talk about you, and I thought, man, we need to get you guys on. Oh, well, That's thank great, you. Man. Yeah, we need to really get you guys it. on. You guys are doing some good stuff out there in the world, yeah. mm-hmm. and I uh, wanted to bring you in here to to uh, this world. So how's it going? Going wonderful. It's going wonderful. Yeah, pretty yeah. good. Great good. band, great fellas. Mm-hmm. We're having a great time playing, of course, music of Santana. Of course. It's, it's beautiful. It's mm-hmm. very worldly. Right. You know, and Latin jazz rock it oh, touches yeah. everybody, especially the ladies. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that, true. You know, I mean, it's great bands to play for all guys, but right. we like women out there to, <laughs> right. you know, get on the floor and right. tell us they love well, us. Well, that's the only way the dudes panel. will come. Yeah. 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 The, the only too. way the ladies. dudes will come is that if too. you get the women there. So, mm-hmm. hey. Mm-hmm. So you're smart. You're uh, doing a smart thing there. So how did this Santana Tribute project get started? Uh, fortunately, ever since I was young, junior high, I learned to play guitar, learned the language of music. I always noticed Santana music out of the bunch, be it Judas Priest, be it Humble Pie, be it any of the rock bands, be it Gino Vanelli, Van Morrison, anybody, everybody. But Santana, there's something different. And I've always played Santana to the, from A to Z. And every album, boom, I'd learn all the album. I learned the album. Finally, after a few years, 20, I start meeting uh, percussionists, uh, conga players, timbali players that play Santana. And I've always played it, and I've always been able, very fortunate, to find guys who are great musicians. Some of the greatest musicians America has produced are like Petey, my keyboard player, Freddie Anderson, some great musicians. And it's, uh, we've always been able to hold true the level of the quality of Santana. Right, so, yeah. right. That's yeah. awesome. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So you guys get along really well. Yes, we yeah, do. Yeah. Yes, we do. You ever fight about anything? No. Uh, <laughs> every now and then we might 
pipe or a little something across the stage, a popcorn. Do you? Or yeah. Do you? No, no, no. Never yep. about no, money. No. Never uh-huh. about women. Nothing Everybody like that. really gets along well. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Get up on that stage is just like a whole nother feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Y'all really enjoying what you're doing. Yeah, oh, we really each of you. Each other really yeah. well. And it's like a big puzzle, right? Everyone is a piece, and well, it's got to fit together. And one thing I can say is everybody in the band that we have now with the conga player, timbali player, drummer, keyboards, bass, me on guitar, lead singer, everybody has their own group they play in. But right. when we call together. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean you're their own group? The se- separate Everybody groups? has their own bands. Oh, okay. Everybody has their own separate bands projects away separate. from Soul Sacrifice. Be it da- dance bands, Latin bands, rock bands. But when we get bookings for the Santana sound, we all pull together and come awesome. together to play it's Santana. A certain sound, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The sound that. Yeah. It just moves you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh no, I totally agree. I mean, you know, I've got the the original Woodstock album. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh Soul yeah, sacrifice. I, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. And uh yeah, so well, that's really cool. And and it, and there's a lot of players. I mean, let's talk about who all is in the band. You there's a lot of players in this band. Yes, there yes. is. Percussion section alone. There is Freddie, of course, our main drummer, who is is the foundation for the band. There's our uh, uh, conga player, player uh, Narvo, and uh, Juan. How do you say it? Now it's his last name. Navarro. Navarro. Uh-huh. Our timbali player Daniel Cisneros Jr. And then our our John our Eccles. N- John Eccles, our bass, our notes with Petey, and then me on guitar. Boom. And we have a lead singer, stand up singer. And uh, it all comes together through that groove, that Latin jazz rock groove. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love the percussion. The percussion to me is everything. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the, that's the heart. The foundation. Mm-hmm. That's right. The foundation. Oh, that's the, yeah. the heartbeat. Uh-huh. So that's really cool. And it, and it takes, you know, it's, it's a lot to, especially if everyone's got side projects um, yes. mm-hmm. or other projects. I don't mean just side project, but other projects. It's, you know, when you've got that many people trying to get them together and the schedules and all that, I know it's mm-hmm. a lot of work. And trying to remember the songs. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you can't call right. them all the week before. Usually yeah. it takes no. a month or two yeah. bookings, and then boom, we can arrange well, you know schedules. There, there's something to be said about that too, guys. Uh, when you're not that available, there seems to be more demand that comes with yes. that oh, sometimes. Yes. The irony because of it. Because you can't play mm-hmm. every weekend, so – you know they got to book your way out, and it makes mm-hmm. you, you know, it makes you more in in demand. Very right, true, right, right, right. True. right, right. I mean, we would love to be together all the time, but you know, yeah. it's That's a big it. band. It's a big band. Yeah, it takes a lot of money. money. Yeah. It's a big stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. It, it just so happens. I know you'll find this hard to believe, but mm-hmm. it just so happens that I've got some behind the scenes video Uh-oh. of one of your rehearsals. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I believe it's a rehearsal, and you know you never know where mm-hmm. my cameras are, and I'd like to play. Uh-huh. I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to play you a little bit of uh, what we've recorded here for you guys, and let the uh, audience see a little sampling of what I got. And uh, yeah, there we go. Yes, that's a rehearsal. A little soul sacrifice there. Mm-hmm.
are back from Soul Sacrifice on Barside Jive Live. So great having you guys in. Now, who came up with the name? Uh, our booking agent actually does. She owns the uh, rights to the name Soul Sacrifice. And she was out looking for a Santana uh, tribute type band. And she came across us at the very beginning and offered us, I mean, I can give you bookings using the Soul Sacrifice name. And sure, no problem. So oh, we've wow. had a great little joint venture. Is that Andy? Yes, yeah. Andy Jones. Uh -huh. Andy, she's a, good, tribute she's a band. sweet person. Yeah, she's yeah. Very I've known sweet. her for a long, long yeah. time. We've been with her for a while. She's a good lady. Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. So um, it's a great name. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, yeah, cool yeah. I mean Not for least. Santana. Yeah. I mean, yes. right. If you see it on the marquee, you know what you yeah yeah walking into. Yes. Yeah yeah uh, yeah. Yes. And uh, I'd love to know, and I don't want to take a lot of time, and mm -hmm. but I want I'd love to know from each of you, and you too, Pete. You're going to have to talk on this one. <laughs> I I want to know kind of how this music thing got started in your life. Uh, at what age was it, you know, family, friend? How did this music thing, you know, mm -hmm. got like some of us were forced to play the piano. Okay. That's kind of how. And some some were, you know, they just had this. They heard the Beatles and they got, had to play the freaking guitar. So I want to go around and let's start with you, Freddie. Well, yeah, I started like at eight years old, which I suppose have been a guitar player. Yeah, why? Because that's what my daddy gave me, a guitar. Oh, okay. <laughs> gave my brother the drum, and yeah. I wanted a drum, but he beat me so much about messing with his drum every day before he get home from school, so he just wound up giving it to me. Right. So he the one really started me out. Oh, okay. Drums. But I have, um, since the, I've been playing, I uh, when I was back in Philadelphia, then I started playing with a group called Soul Men. Soul Men was one of the big time top 40 bands there that goes out with a lot of the artists from uh from uh, uh sigma sound oh, okay and then from there i moved to california so i started working for motown a little bit and doing stuff like that and then signed with awesome. a group uh, between the two from victor records so i did some stuff you know and i'm proud of it and then i got a nephew just a, a famous drummer now uh-huh that's anderson pack Okay. Mm -hmm. so wow. He's doing, he's doing real well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but that's how I got into it. And I always right. just love playing drums. And when I'm behind this, like I'm in a whole nother world. Well, right. Well, now you said your brother got you. Yeah. He got you kind of. Victor. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is he still around? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And does he still play? Uh, no. 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 He, he wound up, like I say, once uh, he just decided after beating me up every day. He decided, hey. He, he was done. Yeah. He was done. Yeah, he was okay. done. Okay, so so did you play like in high school? And yeah. You are in band? But you know what? All through high school, only thing they let me do was I played the flute, I played uh, clarinet, and I played trombone. Wow. <laughs> Never the drums yeah. until I won my first talent show. But, you know, playing the drums. But let me ask you, did you want to play the drums when you were when you yes. played the flute and the uh, trumpet? Yeah, I wanted to play the drums, but that's what they had. Um, yeah. It seemed like well, every brother, time I got there. That's my same freaking story because <laughs> I only went to band because I wanted to play yeah, the drums, right? That's it. And they said, we don't have any yeah. slots for yeah. drummers. We've got a ton of drummers, yeah. but we need a trombone player. Yep. And I was like, well, what does that mean? And they showed yeah. it to me, and I was like, okay, if I can play drums later, I'll do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never after, happens. After two years, they still didn't have yeah. a slot. For it. So I'm like, no, I'm done. This is a You're trick. Right about that. This is a dirty trick, and I'm uh -huh. done. So, but yeah, I mean that same thing, same yeah. thing, same thing. So, All right, Pete, it's your turn, brother. Uh, I come from a family of musicians. On my my dad's side, my mom's side, they all play some kind of instrument. Really? Uh, yeah. So keyboard. I, learned, uh, I was the only keyboard player, so you know they taught me from like maybe six, seven years old, how to start playing keyboards because they needed a keyboard player. <laughs> Your mom and dad did? My dad did and his band. Really? Yeah, I wanted to play guitar, you know, like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I caught on, and from there on, I, you know, from I started off at you know, a real real young age, and I couldn't, even re I couldn't even see the keyboards. My hands were way up here, and all you wow. saw was my shoes, you know, when they took pictures. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Now, you started on the piano, right? Yeah, the piano in Oregon at the church. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I've been playing ever since. You know, I have a, quite a few bands. I have, you know, my own little band out here, Fort Worth in Dallas. And I've been playing with these guys for about six years now. 
Now, mm-hmm. what kind of music do you play outside of Soul Sacrifice? Uh, a little bit of everything. It depends who I'm playing with. Yeah, you know, I play pop, pop music, top forty music, blues, rock. You know, yeah, all of all the standards music that's playing right now in clubs. So, besides the keyboards, do you sing? No, I don't sing. You did, you, no. but but you're awesome on the keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the solo. Anything that's got <laughs> anything that's got uh, keys on it, you can play it. Yeah, I got a guitar and I got a little rolly pad. Oh, do you? Yeah, all kinds of toys. And he oh. has a great ear. Does great he? ear, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I love the last name Pistolas. Yeah, but that's not real. Your no, last that's name. Just my stage name. It is a cool name. <laughs> Why? How'd you pick that? I uh, uh, you my like dad. My dad's band members picked that for me. When oh, I was did little. they? Yeah. When you were a little guy? <laughs> yeah. Because you were a pistol. <laughs> yeah. No, you weren't a pistol. You were two pistols. <laughs> two pistols. Pistol Lance. Yeah. Pistol Pete. Are you really? Is that your personality? Are you a pistol? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes? Depends. Yeah. You get fired up? Yeah. On stage I do. <laughs> On stage I do. I oh, get, yeah. I well, that's cool. That's it. Hey, who's your favorite Who's your favorite keyboard player? Uh, Jordan Ruiz. Ruiz. Really? Yeah. He's phenomenal. And, you know. Loved the what I, I you know a lot of the stuff I learned I learned from watching him. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. All right, Robert. Oh, you're up, brother. Well, I come from a family of big band musicians. Oh wow. My grandfather, you mentioned trombone, was Jack Teagarden. No way. Yeah, he and uh, played with Louis Armstrong, Ben yeah. Pollock, the Dorsey Brothers. I grew up wow. as a little kid listening to all that, and yeah. my father was Jack Teagarden Jr. So okay. amazingly, boom, I went with them all the time when the big band players would come into town. Right. I'd be the one to go with them. I, I was always around music, big bands. Of course, when the Beatles came on Ed Sullivan show, yeah. I was on the floor yeah. watching it. Dad, I want to do that. And my dad's going, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Dad, yes. Yeah. And boom, that's when things split. And I, they bought me a guitar, took lessons, learned the language of music. And then just started playing variety, played everything, standards, some blues, some Spanish music, boom. Uh, you know, Rock everything. If it had a guitar in it, I loved it. So that came to by junior high. High school, I was gigging. I had $100 wow. in my pocket. You couldn't tell me anything. Wow. I'm going to be a musician. And my mom, you're never going to make a dime out of that. <laughs> you know, yeah, okay, mom, okay, mom. She should right. be. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, she was right. I'm more in debt yeah, than I she am. Had no, she had no idea how right she was. But <laughs> yeah, and I've loved music ever since. I couldn't imagine doing anything else in my life other yeah. than playing music or being with musicians. Yeah, those are the only friends yeah. I have. Well, the cool thing about it is you get to do what you really enjoy. Oh yeah, it's just a damn sh- shame mm-hmm. it doesn't pay more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very true. Yeah, I had to take it back. I made some good money mm-hmm. in, in a while. Yeah, in, back in my earlier days. I yeah, made some good money. Yeah. Went overseas and yeah, yeah so. it's just the the shame of it is unless you really make it, yes. it's just not consistent. Mm-hmm. It's yes, not right. you know, and it's, sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. Who yeah. You know. yeah, being prepared at yeah. the right time to meet that right person. That mm-hmm. mm, yeah, and you never know. Never know. Right. You never mm-hmm. know. It's it's Why? it's like I don't know if you guys met him, but Rocky Athens. Oh, I know Rocky. Yeah, that was on From my town. yeah yes. yeah been in Dallas. So, yeah, so he. You know, that's you know, he's had some amazing mm-hmm. opportunities mm-hmm. just because he somebody heard him and And he's know, a great guitar player too. Yeah. He's he, really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's and he's a great guy. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, so um that, yeah, it's interesting. I love hearing your stories because they're they're in a way, you know, they're similar, but in a way they're really not. You know, mm-hmm. they're 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 really is they're varied. And um you know, thinking of Santana and the fact from their early beginnings back at Woodstock, 1969. Right. I mean, really, that's when. Oh. I, that's when. After that, that was the big thing that got me to pay attention to Santana was the right. fact they played Woodstock. Right. right? Um, they have become one of the best-selling groups of all time with 43.5 million certified albums sold in the U.S. and an estimated 100 million sold worldwide. (laughs) Not too shabby. No. Not too shabby. No. Their discography includes 25 studio albums, 14 of which reached the U.S. top 10. Mm -hmm. And in 1998, Santana was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which really was – 
you know, that wasn't really late. I mean, that was kind of early on. And Mm -hmm. in 2000, the band won six Grammy Mm -hmm. Awards in one night, a record tied only with Michael Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. And three. Supernatural. And three Latin Grammy Awards. Mm -hmm. So how does it make you guys feel, and I'd like to hear from all of you, to actually get to perform the work of a band of that magnitude? It makes me feel wonderful. Yeah. yeah. It makes me when we're on stage playing their music. Yes. It just makes I mean, me feel at home, really. Mm-hmm. Make, yeah. 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 make feel at and home. Why, at home, in what way? Because uh, it, it lets me do uh, all the little jazz stuff that I do, the blue stuff, the Latin stuff, all the stuff yes, that I do it's comes all to me rolled naturally. It's up into one. It's all yes. up to one. It just, I just yeah. feel like it fits like a glove for me. You just kind of get in the groove and you just stay there. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And the melodies the are so yep. complementary to the chord progression, to the groove, to the, the beat, the percussion. It's all one body. It's different. It's different. Time. Though you can mix the blues in there and say there's some funk in there and there's this and African beats. But the way Carlos Santana does it, it's different. Same it's just yeah. different. Yeah. And when you do it's Samba Pati, Europa, Time. Maria Maria, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And Carlos is the only, the only still the only original member of that band. Oh, there. Yes. 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 It's the Carlos Santana show. Yes. Yeah, it really yes. is. It really he's, is. He's done a good job. So let's uh, go back to some uh, of Jay's cameras, and uh, we're kind of watching you guys during this rehearsal, and let's see what else we uh, we captured here. What do we got here? Jingle. It's jingle. Jingle.
another uh, rehearsal uh, segment that uh, we caught uh, recently during these guys uh, doing a little practice. And uh, we really look forward to seeing these guys uh, perform live. And I'm sure a lot of you do, too. So uh, can you guys uh, talk a minute about your schedule, what it looks like you got coming up? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I know we got one in June the 2nd. June the 2nd. Uh, May. May the 1st. May 1st. June the 2nd is what? The uh, uh, Rowlett? Rowlett. City of Rowlett. City of Rowlett. And May the 1st is, that's Johnny's gig. Yeah. That's Johnny's. Is that Arlington? Uh, it might be. You almost have to go to the website, DFW yeah. Soul Sacrifice Tribute. And all the dates are posted on there. DFW Soul Sacrifice Tribute. Mm -hmm. And .com. all the schedules. Um, I guess Andy keeps that schedule up. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I, if I know yes. Andy, she mm -hmm. it's current. Cause she's, she's on the top of us. She's yeah. On, yeah, she's all over it. So mm -hmm. that'll be that's great, guys. So just go to that website and uh, check Soul Sacrifice out. These guys, uh, it's a rare treat to see them because they don't play that often. Mm -hmm. But uh, when they do play, they play with heart and soul. Yes, so... Uh, Make sure you get out there and see them. And I've got a couple more things uh, to, to talk about before we go. But uh, if you'll stick around to the end, I'll play just a little bit more, I think. Let's see what we got here. We've got a picture of the band and we got some final notes. Okay, besides my Tuesday and Thursday 7.30 p.m. live shows right here at the Vocal Studios, uh, don't forget, every Wednesday down in Dallas' Design District on Dragon Street from 7 to 8 p.m., I feature singer-songwriters and visual artists on that show. It's just an hour. And uh, check us out uh, every Wednesday, like tomorrow. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. I can remember that. Yeah, yeah, because it's tomorrow. tomorrow. Not next week. No. It's not a tomorrow. month. It's not June or May. No. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's a whole nother song. Yeah. All right. Well, be sure to check out my content on YouTube, Barside Jive Live. And I want to thank Jay and Jimmy, our production team, for all the great work they do behind the scenes to make these shows possible. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. So, guys, we are just about out of here. I want to thank you again for hanging out with me and Pete and Robert and Freddie from Soul Sacrifice. And we've had a great time. And we want you to know that we appreciate your support of what we do. And we hope that you'll share us with your friends, your family, your followers. And until next time, be kind to one another. We want you to keep it real. Keep on rocking. We'll see you next Tuesday. And before we go, besides a photo of the band, I've got a video. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows this one. <laughs> And thank you very much, DC. You're thank welcome, you, man. man. It was, You're it was welcome. Pleasure to meet you. It's been you. my pleasure. No, it's been my pleasure to have you. Appreciate it.
have mercy. Jive Live.com